Welcome, you guys. My name is Krista Wiley. Thank you guys all so much for attending All Things Cruises. I am a one-star double platinum and two-time ITAN card holder and a cruise fanatic. Um, absolutely love cruising. And like I said, every week I pick some new topic uh, to be going over. And as you guys can all see, I'm recording, which means I'm going to go over a topic that we've not gone over before. So if you see anybody that is not on this meeting, you guys go to your teams, go to your chats, go to your wherevers, tell them, hey, Chris is gonna be covering a new topic on the cruise training. So you guys might wanna hop on. So I'll give you guys just a few minutes, go spread the word, get people on here. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I know I asked all of you guys how long you guys have been in the business. A little bit about me. I have been in the business almost three and a half years now. Uh, prior to this, I was actually a paramedic. This is my full-time income now. So all of you guys that are asking questions, oh, can this? Yeah, absolutely. It can be your full-time. It is definitely my full-time. I started doing cruise trainings probably two plus years ago. So I know a lot about cruises. I love cruising. And I love imparting all of that information on all of you guys. So today, what we're going to go over in all things cruises is we are going to be going over what do you do after you book a cruise? What do you, what, what do, you do? Right? Okay. I got it deposited. I got them booked. But what next? Right? Some of the questions that usually come up is, um, give me just a second. Uh, hey, Karen, can I ask you a favor? Sure. Um, I'm going to make you co-host so that way you can admit people into um, into the meeting for me so I don't have to keep pausing <laughs> to admit people. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So um, I get a lot of questions about, you know, what do I do? Um, what do I do after I have them booked, right? They're deposited. They've, you know, I've got all of that stuff going on. Um, you know, now what? Now, one of the things that um, people discuss is doing instant commissions, right? We talk about instant commissions. We talk about um, upfront. We talk about booking, um, booking fees, service fees, research fees. Anybody here um, doing those? Anybody put in the chat box for me, don't unmute, but um, put in the chat box. Is anybody um, doing upfront or booking fees, service fees, whatnot. Okay. Now, the reason that I mentioned this is because in the cruise industry, typically, now I'm never going to say always because there's always a cruise line that proves me wrong. Generally speaking, cruise lines do not pay out commissions on things like drink packages, excursions, dining packages, and things like that. And people, and I and I come to you guys with some of these topics because they are things that I've had agents ask me. Well, Krista, yes, I'm getting commission on the cruise, but can I charge a service fee or a booking fee for doing all of the extras, right? Now, I don't know about you guys, but me personally, if I got done working with a travel agent, booking my cruise, and then they come up to me and say, hey, if you want me to book your excursions and your this, that, and the other, I'm now going to charge you a booking fee. That to me doesn't sound very cool, right? Would anybody want to be hit with that? Like, oh, oh, hey, I got done booking your cruise. Now you need to pay me X amount of dollars if you want me to finish booking your cruise. Uh, no, <laughs> no, right? So that's not the time to do it. Now, why am I bringing up these things? Because so many times people will say, Krista, we don't get paid excursions. Now, I say generally because Virgin changes the game with a lot of different things, right? There are some cruises that are starting to pay commissions on different things. So I'm going to just very broadly make this statement, right? So I, I, yes, Jason, um, like I said, this is not a, this is very generalized, not a hundred percent every single cruise, right? So a lot of people will come to me and say, Krista, well, I'm not earning commission on the excursions. So can I go outside of the cruise line? to book their excursions, so I make commission. Now, if you've ever been to any of my trainings before, I will definitely stand behind the, I will never book an excursion, excursion for a client outside of the cruise. 
Uh, <laughs> Carolyn, yeah, right. Um, exactly. So, right. I, um, you know, if you want to charge a service fee, that's fine. You got to do it beforehand. Now understand that charging a service or booking fee with a cruise is a little bit, you got to word it right. Right. Um, because people can go on cruise on cruise line websites and they can, you know, there's not a lot of variances, you know, like we find prices differently or whatnot. So when it comes to excursions, some people will say, Krista, can I go to Viator? Can I go to XYZ uh, vendor or supplier, you know, I don't know, whatever, 365 or, or excursion through whatever it is. Um, you guys, let me tell you the risk with that, right? You always want to be booking your excursions with the cruise line. They guarantee you back on the ship. If you book somebody with Viator and they're late back to the ship, they're going to watch their cruise ship leave. The cruise ship is not going to wait for them. Now, if it's an excursion booked through the cruise line, and for some reason, like the bus breaks down or there's traffic or whatnot, and they you're late to the boat, the ship is going to wait for them because it's an excursion through the cruise line. Now, how do you do that? Most times after you get done booking a cruise and you go into their booking, you aren't going to see a spot for excursions. You're not going to see a spot for drink packages, right? And so typically what I do with my clients is that this is when I get on the phone with them or I do a Zoom if they're Zoom savvy and I will walk them through this, okay? This is part of my services to teach them. I had, I have the cutest little 80 year old couple and they do the most <laughs> elaborate vacation. Um, in February, they did a 12 day Panama Canal cruise, right? They wanted all these excursions, all of these different things. And so I, after I got them booked, after their cruise is paid for, after their, you know, flights, hotel, all of that was booked, paid for. We then got on the phone and I did kind of a consultation with them and I walked them through how to book excursions, drink packages and whatnot. I'm not making a commission on that. They need to get online anyways. And so I walked them through how to book their own excursions. I'm still providing them a service. Am I not? Am I, I'm still, yes, they are actually looking at them, but I'm walking them through it. I'm helping them figure that out. Now I actually have a cruise booked for myself. And so what I'm going to do is, is this is going to be Royal Caribbean because that's where my cruise is through. But if you guys have never looked at excursions, drink packages, dining packages, or whatnot, I want you guys to understand what that looks like from a consumer standpoint. Does that make sense? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. That and, and understand that it, this isn't it lack, you're not like being lazy or anything, but you're doing what's best for your client. I would never want to put somebody on Viator so I could make 10 bucks, then miss their ship, and then you got a whole other world of hurt, right? Guarantee you that if they miss their ship and you went through Viator or some other cruise or some other vendor to book their excursion and they don't make it back to the ship, guarantee you two things they're never going to book with you again, and two, you're probably going to get a negative review. And so let's not do either one of those things and let's just do right by the client. Makes Can a lot I of ask sense. a question? Yeah, Have absolutely. Have you heard of um, Shore, uh, Shore Excursions Group .com? Yep, they don't do they it. They guarantee. They, <laughs> that's <laughs> Tell me what I'm about talking that. about. They, do, they guarantee you back to the ship. Yeah, absolutely. But they are not linked with, and, I, and I've had this, they're the ones that most people will talk about. Yeah, they, they guarantee you back to the ship. They don't guarantee the ship's going to wait for them. So that could be like, oh, we guarantee you to get back to the ship three ports from now. Does that make sense? The ship is not going to wait for them. The only time the ship is going to wait is if the excursion was booked through the cruise line. Right. So again, it's your business. You guys do with your business, whatever you want to, right? I'm not here to tell you guys what to do with your business. Well, Jason, I mean, they can't make those promises. The cruise there, the cruise line isn't going to wait, <sighs> right? The cruise line isn't going to wait for them. They booked outside of the cruise line. So that is that, <laughs> right? Um, okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. 
And I am gonna show you guys, let me make sure my chat box is up. So if you guys have questions, come on, move some things around on my screen. Yes, it is. It's, I mean, they guarantee them back to the ship, but they don't guarantee the ship's gonna wait. Uh, and what's the difference? Um, oh, that they'll get them to the next port if they miss the ship? That's what I was going to ask. So then they would have to get them to the next port. Yeah. That, that, oh. That's my thing. And I have talked to, because I had somebody else reach out to me about that exact vendor. Right? I've asked that. And I've also asked Archer about it. And I said, you know, I am okay with being wrong. I have zero problem being wrong. But I also go ask the question, right? So I actually talked to a couple of different BDMs with cruise lines and I said, hey, people are talking about this excursion company. They guarantee them back to the ship. And they said, yeah, but the ship's not going to wait for them. They just guarantee them to eventually get back on the ship. You know, so I have BDMs telling me not to book with them. And, and the thing is, is that nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, there may not be any issue. But do you want your client to be that one person? So Marie, that's the thing is I've never looked into them. I've never gone to them. I just know from talking to the cruise lines that they said that if it's not booked with the cruise line, the cruise ship will not wait. So that's that. <laughs> how, they, how they guarantee it or how they get them there, I'm not entirely sure. I didn't ask the question to be very honest. Um, just, I would just stick with the cruise line. So this is Royal Caribbean. Like I told you guys, I'm going to go through the Royal Caribbean because that is the, the cruise that I personally have, um, booked and have access to. So this is the consumer site. Just so you guys are very, we're very clear. Like this is the consumer site. Okay. So. I personally, I love Royal Caribbean. I'm a diamond member with them. So I cruise with them all the time. All right, let me go ahead and. So for example, what you're doing right now is you're going on the consumer site, which my aunt is not tech savvy and I booked her a cruise and I booked it on NCL. She's going to Antarctica and the shore excursions are showing on the consumer site, but not on the NCL site. So I can book them for her. Correct. That's what I was saying is that they don't, That's they're not going to show on your portal. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, cool. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, I was just in here. <laughs> So let me ask you, how do you, uh, how you can help the client if you don't have access to the portal to book the excursion? Like how you said that you helped your clients to walk them through. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, if I don't have access, I wouldn't be able to help anybody. So you're uh, not going to have access to their, their, their consumer site, right? You're not going to have access. Like you don't have access to mine, right? But that's why you're on the phone or on a Zoom, right? And you're going to walk them through setting up their account on Royal Caribbean or Carnival or whatnot. So for instance, my 80-year-old couple and you guys, if two 82-year-olds can figure out how to get on, on there and I could talk them through and walk them through it, right? I, I think anybody can be walked through it, right? If you don't have an, a consumer site with Royal, Go create a login for the consumer site. Go look through it. Now, obviously, you don't have a cruise booked, but you at least know the process of logging into a consumer site. So let's say celebrity. I've never been on a celebrity cruise, but I have a celebrity account. So I could walk her through the different things. Now, this is me, guys. This is what I do. Right? Right? Now, if you want to create it for them and you, whatever the case may be, but here's the thing, there's two options. You either can walk them through doing the online thing or 
you can call the cruise line and you can book the stuff for them. There are two options. I'm just showing you this option, right? I'm not saying that this is the only option. You absolutely could figure out which different excursions there are available, what drink packages are available, and you could call Norwegian Cruise Line and say, hey, my, this is my, my, I'm a travel agent. These are the packages, you know, the, these are the cruise lines. These are the things they want to add. And you could process payment that way. Okay, so there's two different ways. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, Christy, let's say your client's like, nah, I am not, I don't want to do it. Nope, nope, nope. That's when you can then do the online. Like, that's when you can call on the phone. Okay. Yes, I have a client that way. He refuses to learn or to do anything. So he just says, nope, you do it. So that's what I do. Yeah, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. You can call up the cruise line and you can do it that way, right? Which then means that you're going to need, you're going to be doing their check-ins. You're going to be doing their baggage tabs. You're going to be doing all of those things. Now, at some point, because cruise lines have apps, a lot of cruise lines are now not, I mean, obviously they can't require anybody to do anything, right? But they're highly suggesting that people download the app for the cruise because that's where entertainment schedules are at. That's where, you know, they'll be able, some cruise lines, they use the app in order to get them through the muster drill, right? They use the app for updates and, and communications. I know when I went on, um, when I went on my last carnival, I think I had all of my stuff right there in the app. I didn't even have to really print anything out. Now I did because I am a hard copy paper printing kind of person. Um, so there is an app as well that they can be utilizing things. But understand that when you book a client for a cruise, that's not the end of it, right? Because now 30 days prior to cruising, you're going to have to make sure they're checked in. They're going to have to make sure that their, um, you know, their credit card is on there for their onboard expenses. You're going to need to make sure that they get their baggage tags. And if they don't want to do the check-in, it's totally fine. We can totally do that for them. You could do that check-in, right? But you're going to then print out the tags. You're going to have to give them to them. Okay. Yeah. Got to have all the people. And that's why cruising is just so different than land travel. Off topic, sorry. I watched an Arctic travel webinar where the presenter said, at discount, he pays full price and gets the commission since you're a big cruiser. I wonder what you do. Um, so I, Kelly, I do the same thing. I book, um, I book my, um, I booked my, this exact Royal Caribbean cruise. I booked it just like I would be booking any one of my clients. And I just, I'll earn the commissions. And that's something that you can weigh, right? You can weigh out, you know, what's the discount versus what's the commission? Which one are you going to make more on? Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've logged into Royal Caribbean. You guys can see here, my next cruise is Oasis of the Seas, September 10th through September 17th. Going for my birthday. <laughs> so now what we can do, I can click here. It says seven night, perfect day, Bahamas cruise, Oasis of the Seas, September 10th, yada, yada. Now, let's say I had several cruises. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Let's say I had several, several cruises and this is not the one that I'm wanting to look at. I can also switch the sailing. But here you guys can see reservation. There's my reservation number, my husband, me, and my two kids. I'm gonna go ahead and click on view cruise details. Okay, 97 days to go. And you guys can see, I actually have two because this is my other son and then my best friend. So I have both of these linked to them. Now, what I can do is obviously there's a couple of different buttons. Um, it shows right here, your documents. You have no cruise documents available at this time because it's still 97 days away. This won't open until at least 30 days prior to. Now, enjoy savings on dining tours and more. Plan my cruise. So now. If you are walking your client through this, even if maybe they don't want to book it themselves, but maybe they just want an idea of what's available and maybe they're visual person, visual people, 
right? They can look to see what's the deluxe beverage package versus this. What's the unlimited dining package? Is it worth it? Should I get Voom? You know, should I get streaming? Should I, whatever. Now, you guys have all of these different things up here. Shore excursions, beverages, dining, spa and fitness, perfect day at Coco K, internet, VIP passes, onboard activities, entertainment, photo, arcade, gifts, and gear. They really can load up their vacation. Now, when I say this is a conversation that I have with my clients after their cruise is paid for, why? I had a client who was adamant. It was actually a cruise they took over from another agent. I ha- They were adamant about getting their drink package. Adamant about getting the drink package. Some things happened financially. They no longer could afford the cruise. The drink package was non-refundable. So why pay for extras if your cruise isn't paid off? Does that make sense? I get it. Some people are like, but I want to get all the things booked. I want to get all the things planned. I want to get all of those things, but their cruise isn't even paid off for. So I always tell my clients, look, let's get your cruise paid off. Let's get your flights. Let's get your hotel. Like, let's get all of that paid off, booked, paid off and handled. And then we'll start looking into the extras like shore excursions and beverages and and all of those different things. Okay, so now you can see shore excursions. You can pick one of the ports or you can just look at all the ports. Now, to me, this looks mighty a lot, right? So let's say I just want to know what's going to go on in Port Canaveral. Okay, Port Canaveral, here we go. Kennedy Space Center, Gatorland, Disney World, so on and so forth. So now you can look at these different things, right? You can look at these different, they can read. Uh, Marie, no, not necessarily. I don't, my, this cruise is not paid off for me and I can book these. Yeah. My cruise, my cruise isn't due to be paid off until June 12th. So, um, I still have a couple of days. You couldn't, I have no idea. I've always, I've been able to now I've done it before, but I knew I could pay it off. But yeah, I could definitely pay for any of these. So you guys can also watch 5%, 10%, 5%, 5%, 10%, 5%. And I'm telling you that Royal, I mean, that um, Carnival one, they were pretty irritated that they couldn't get that stuff back. James, that is my suggestion. Make sure that they have their crews paid for. They have those things paid for. Because what if they decide... Four months before the cruise, like some, they're, I don't know, whatever disaster happened, right? And now they're like, well, shoot, I can't afford to pay for the cruise. So they want to use their travel protection. They want to make sure that, you know, they decide to cancel the cruise. But the extras, they're not refundable, right? So that's why I'm saying, like, add these things on later. So you guys can see here the different um, excursions. You guys can check out Nassau. You guys, they can filter it by interest. They can fix, um, filter it by number of hours and activity level, okay? So that's gonna be the shore excursion. Same thing with the beverage package. Now, something to discuss about the alcohol beverage or the alcohol beverage package. Now, the rule is anyone over the age of 21 in a room, so let's say, let's just use my cruise, for example. Let's say my husband wanted the drink package, but let's say I don't drink. Well, anybody over the age of 21 has to buy the drink package. However, if you call the cruise line, they can actually waive that, but you'll still have to buy the top of the line, the t- highest, whatever, non-alcoholic beverage package. So I could get my husband the deluxe, but then I would still have to purchase the refreshment package. But that's not something you guys can do online. You guys actually have to call and have that done. So don't just assume that, okay, you know, everyone over the age of 21, even if my, my you know, one of the two doesn't drink, they don't, they're not necessarily forced their hand, but you do have to go go through and call the cruise line to get that waiver done. And they're still going to rely or they're still going to have them purchase a drink package. 
Now, um, so they have these different drink packages. Now let's say everybody, you know, somebody wants a refreshment package, anybody under the age of eight or under the age of 21 will have to purchase it. They won't just let one person buy the soda package because let's face it, people try to get away with things and they start giving things to other people. And so that's why it is. Yes, Christy, we're just talking cruise lines, okay? Um, uh, with Royal Caribbean, can you not add the drink package to their quote? I no, not in the not in our portal. No, no. You could go and like do a Google search of approximately what it's what it would be, but you can't add it into um, the cruise quote actually on the site. Okay, so both drink packages need to be purchased if one doesn't drink. So again, James. So let's say you and your significant other go on a cruise. You want the drink pack, you want the alcohol package, but your significant other doesn't drink alcohol. You can call up the cruise line and say, hey, my significant other doesn't, you know, doesn't drink alcohol. They're recovering alcoholic. They're allergic to alcohol. They religiously don't believe in drinking, what, whatever the reason is, right? However, I want the drink package. So what they'll do is they'll manually go in and they'll put the alcohol package on there for you. And then put the highest paying non-alcoholic beverage package for your significant other or the other person that's over 21. Do we not worry that an excursion won't be sold out? I mean, that's always a risk. That's why I'm saying, Penny, understand you can book the excursions. Just understand if that's where, you know, really like doing those consultations with your clients, feeling out your clients, checking out these things, you know, really having that conversation. Now, if they're like, heck no, gung-ho, we're going, I don't care if my leg falls off, I'm going on this cruise and I want to, you can give as much advice as you want to as a travel advisor. They don't have to listen. And if they say, go ahead, I want to book it anyways, book it for them. But if they end up canceling and you have to hit them with the bad news, well, I mean, I told you so, right? Um, what, what if the other adult is pregnant? Does she still have to buy the beverage? Pack? So again, Tiana, if one person buys the alcohol package, anyone else over the age of 21 is going to have to purchase the drink package. They just, they, that's, the, that's their only like, okay, we understand you don't drink alcohol. Okay. But here's the thing is within the non-alcoholic beverage package, a lot more is included other than just soda and coffee. If the pregnant, you know, individual doesn't want to drink caffeine, right? There's mocktails, there's juice, there's water, right? All of those things are included in that as well. Um, and then yeah, obviously there's water packages, there's um, coffee cards. Those coffee cards, you guys, they're like punch cards. You get, if you buy a punch card for 10 coffees, I don't know how much this one, how many coffees it has, but it's a punch card. $31 for 10 coffees, right? Boom, boom, boom. You have 10 coffees to purchase during the length of your cruise. So that's what that card is. Now, if you go beyond the 10 or whatever the punch card is, then you're going to go back into the price per coffee. Um, so there's the, the beverage package. Now, the next one I'm going to go over is dining. Now, people ask me all the, all the time, Krista, specialty dining, is it necessary, right? Is it something that you would recommend. Um, curious, does the refreshment package include coffee? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you are like, hey, Krista, I, I don't really wanna do the bulk brew Folgers thing, then <laughs> it's, um, now Royal Caribbean specifically, a lot of their um, ships, a lot of their fleet of ships actually have Starbucks on their cruise lines. Now I think Carnival, when I was on Carnival last, um, they did not have Starbucks. It was still like a more premium coffee experience, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't Starbucks, but yes, it, in, it includes those higher end coffees, lattes and mochas and things like that. Okay. So dining, specialty restaurant, dining packages, unlimited dining package, three night dining package, chops plus one dining package. Now all cruise lines, they have specialty restaurants. It's better than Folgers, correct. Uh, so these are different dining experiences, taste of royal lunch, sushi and sake lunch, chef's table dinner, 
specialty restaurant dinners, because I think these ones are, um, these are just the dining packages. And then you could purchase individually. Like if you're like, I just really want to eat a Giovanni's and now I'm hungry, <laughs> right? Um, maybe you want to go to Izumi's. Maybe you want to go to Central Park. You want to do hibachi, which this is probably something I don't, you guys, I don't do specialty restaurants, me personally. I think that the food in the dining room is phenomenal. I think that it's amazing. You guys, I have a weakness for hibachi or timpanyaki, depending on where you go. I have, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Wherever I go on vacation, we went to Cancun to an all-inclusive. They had a hibachi and I was like, I just want to go to that restaurant. I will eat pizza for the rest of the trip, but I want to go. I just, I don't know why. I just really like it. So when I saw that their, that our cruise ship has hibachi, I'll probably be making a reservation for that, probably paying for that because it's my guilty pleasure, <laughs> right? Um, I'm sorry, but hibachi is life. It is life, definitely life. I don't know, something about, man, their, their chicken fried rice that they make on the hibachi with um, their garlic butter, I, we're all going to get real hungry real fast, right? Izumi is incredible and you will get lots of leftover save room in your fridge. Yep, absolutely. So the specialty restaurants, they're really kind of just up to you. I have never personally have never needed to do a specialty restaurant, but maybe if your client is, you know, maybe your client is celebrating something special. Maybe they want to go do something special. Maybe they're like, we're celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary and we want to go to the Chop House. We want to go to Chop's Grill. We want to have a very elevated steak dinner, whatever. That's something definitely to look into. But understand like people that are going on regular, you know, they're just going on a family vacation or whatever, understanding that they don't, that sometimes they're like, oh man, is food included? Do I have to pay for specialty restaurants? No. You really aren't going to miss anything by not going to a specialty restaurant. But if you want to, you can. One so does, uh, does yeah. the special the unlimited dining package includes all the specialty restaurants, correct? That they are here. Um, let me let me look. So uh a courtesy reservation would be in one to two days of your sailing. Enjoy a discount of 40% off bottles. What's included? Unlimited visits to specialty dining restaurants every night of your sailing and lunch on sea days. So yes, you could go to a specialty restaurant every lunch and every dinner if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then it says here for restaurants with a la carte, it's $20 food credit. For ships with the venue, Izumi Sushi is a Crick's fix menu. So, or $34.99 food credit. So Izumi, they... They're like, you can either get this prefix menu or you have $35 to spend. So just make sure that you look at exactly what they do include for ships with these venues, Timpanyaki, Izumi, Hibachi is included with a $15 surcharge and chef's tables included. So basically the $15 surcharge, I'm guessing is maybe a tip or something. Um, $49 surcharge. Um, let's see. Once they are on board, can they purchase once they are? Yes. But exactly like um, Nathaniel said, it is limited. So you can see here that people that buy this unlimited dining package, they're booking theirs one to two days before they're sailing. So you don't know how many people bought this unlimited dining package. So if you wait to get on the cruise ship to do specialty dining, you may not have as many availabilities. So for instance, if I really want to do the hibachi, then I'm going to have to plan that before I go on my cruise because it is typically it is very popular right so yeah just understand that it is um based on availability so dining packages anybody questions on dining packages we all good there on the dining packages all right moving along to spawn fitness again this is another one I feel like a lot of people wait to book Spawn Fitness services once they're on the cruise ship. Why? These little spa people, I don't want to say women because I don't want to, there are some men that work in the spa, right? On the very first day that you get on a cruise ship, they are like flies, right? They are getting every, 
come do it, come do a walkthrough, come do a free inspection of the spa. Then after you kind of do your walkthrough, you kind of check out the spa, they'll sit you down and they're like, hey, we're going to give you a deal. Book two spa services, get one free, I, whatever deal they've got going on. So a lot of people, they won't book their spa services until they actually get on the ship. So this one is pretty safe to do once you get on the ship, if this is something that you want to do. Now, if your client is like, nah, I do a deep tissue massage every single time I get on a cruise. I don't care what the, the deal or the perk or the whatever is. I'm not doing any more. I'm not doing any less. I want to do a couple's Swedish, Swedish massage. It's 30% off. It's $208. Whatever the case may be, they just want to purchase it beforehand. Okay. So you guys can see spa and fitness services here. Uh, they have there. It's crazy. I was looking at these the other day and there is some, I'm like, oh man, I've never done, um, I've never done acupuncture. I've never done acupuncture. And I've thought about, man, you know, maybe, I, but I get horrible seasickness. And if, if anybody's ever been to any of my cruise trainings, I get horrible seasickness. And I was actually going through here. They have a seasickness acupuncture. I'm like, you know, I might just splurge and spend $180 and see if this acupuncture will actually work for my seasickness. What's the worst that happens? It doesn't work. I don't know. Um, but you guys, tons and tons of different spa services. Now understand the size of the cruise ship is going to depend on how many spa services they have available. This is a mega ship that I'm going on. So they're going to have a lot more services provided. They have a lot more employees that work there, a lot more people working in the spa. Um, so they're going to have a lot more available. Now, perfect day at Coco Cay, because I am going to perfect day at Coco Cay. So let's say you're going to Alaska. This option isn't going to be up there. So you guys enjoy on board and at perfect day at Coco Cay. So it's going to list things here that are, if you buy the drink package, guess what? It's also available on the island. So if you're getting, you know, you're getting drinks on the ship. Now you go to the island, you still get drinks, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, internet package, shore excursion specifically to perfect day at Coco Cay, whether it's the beach club, whether it's the water park, whether it is, you know, swimming or snorkeling, or I think there's a swimming with the pigs in here, whether there is whatever the case may be. All right. So you guys can, um, it'll give you exactly what's specific to perfect day at Coco Cay. Internet. Okay. This is another one. People, I get a lot of text messages on Krista. Should I get the internet on board? acupuncture does I'm I, I'm really thinking about it Debbie I'm telling you I'm really thinking about getting this acupuncture what's the worst that happens it doesn't work but the best thing is is maybe it does really work and I feel phenomenal so uh one of the things that people talk about uh is Krista should I get internet should I not get internet this is truly a personal preference do you want to be disconnected or do you want to be connected now I'm actually thinking about getting internet because I think that my agents might strike a coup if they couldn't message me <laughs> <laughs> while on my I'm on vacation. So I probably will get um the internet package Zoom plus stream internet package. Nine it's $19.99 per guest per day. How many people only one person needs it, right? Now for me personally, I might actually end up using my perks for this. If you guys do your Royal Caribbean, if you guys do your Royal Caribbean master, doctor, whatever classes trainings you guys actually get different perks and one of the perks that we get is internet so i probably would just utilize my my perks through the cruise line <laughs> do some work while right make that a tax right off my right off my cruise so yeah um, right i have a question yeah go for um, it in the previous page it did show that they had a, i think it was a visa card do you recommend um clients to get those cards this one right here yeah um, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't not recommend it. I don't recommend it. It's, I mean, it's a credit card. So if they wanted to, they could, but I am mm -hmm. not ever going to recommend somebody get a credit card. Got it. Yeah. I mean, if they, if they choose to do it and they want to do it, that's on them, but, um, I, I just, I don't really want to be a part of the world where somebody's like, my travel agent told me to get this credit card and it dinged my credit. And now I'm in credit card debt. I don't know. 
um it's internet so you can do the workplace so uh, can we use those perks if we have a cruise booked already mine is in 90 days on our cci yeah so you can i mean you'd have to look some of them are for you know some perks are for newly booked cruises um some are whatever you just have to look at the specific um perks okay vip passes this is something that somebody recently actually asked me about the key and is it worth getting so the key is your premier access to experiences and activities so what it'll do let's say there's a water slide the key can get you priority access to the water slide Okay, the key designates arrival times, gives you priority access in the terminal on day one, priority access details will be communicated, carry on, bag, drop off, yada, yada, exclusive welcome lunch, 20% off all specialty restaurants, boom, access, whatever, whatever, right? This is something that you could look into, but understand that it's $41.99 per guest per day. And I believe that if one person in the room gets it, everyone has to. Let's see, when you receive your zero, the key, the key was purchased prior to sailing. The key must be purchased prior to sailing by each guest age six or older assigned to the same stateroom. So if you have four people in there, then they're all having to do that, right? Let's see, 41, 41, 99 times four, if you have four people in there, times seven. So $1,200 for this key, if I wanted to get it for my room, okay? Am I gonna utilize these things? Specialty restaurants, boom, fast lane on onboarding activities, yada, yada. Designated seating selection at shows, priority ship to shore departure, disembarkation date, whatnot. So really dive in and see if it is something that's worth it. Now understand that let's say I'm going and I get the key, yet I'm also going with a couple of other people and they choose not to get the key. So now I'm getting on the, the cruise before them because you can't just include them, right? I'm getting priority seating at a show. I can't let them sit with me, right? So if they're traveling with other cabins, you're really going to have to decide that. Because this cruise, I was actually going to get um, Butler, like one of the Butler suites, but I chose not to because I'm actually going with several other cabins and I wasn't going to be able to really utilize that Butler service because nobody else in my group would have been able to use those services as well. So just take a look, see if it's, you know, if it makes sense, maybe they're like, they really want Zoom, they really want boom, but they don't really want to go to any specialties. Guess what? Their flight doesn't get in until noon. So they are not going to get there early enough to use the early stuff. It's per day. Does it have to be the same day for all the keys? So it's per day because the, it, you can't just get it for a certain amount of days. It's like the drink package, right? The drink package is $40 per person per day. You, you can't just choose to only have the drink package for five days. It's either for the whole thing or for none of it. So it's going to be, but the reason that they do this is because maybe it's a five day, maybe it's a four day. They're not going to give you a total price here. They're just going to give you the total, they're going to give you the amount per guest per day, but you can't, yeah, you can't just be like, I want the key on the first day and the last day. No, you got to do it for the whole thing. Okay. So that is the VIP pass. Onboard activities. Maybe you want to get a casita. Maybe you want to do a brunch. Maybe you want to do an all access ship tour. This would be kind of cool, right? Maybe you want to learn how to roll sushi or do a de cupcake decorating class. So these are activities that you can do on board. Um, so day three, four, or five, casita port day. Port day. That means you would be at a port and on a casita. Now I'm good. So sea day, but you guys can see, like let's say somebody's like, you know what? I don't really want to get off in Nassau been there, done that, no desire to go to Nassau, whatever. So, but they really want to experience a casita. So they're like, you know what? I'll get a casita on a port day. It's cheaper. It's 118 versus 249. So that's something to look into. That's if they want to. Um, entertainment. Um, this is, uh, we're putting the finishing touches on our entertainment lineup. So if you're sailing on a ship, so obviously there's nothing there. 
Uh, photo packages. If they purchase the key or any other amenity before cruising, are those non-refundable like the drink package? I believe so. And you would just have to read the um, thing. Um, photo package up to 50 photos, photo package up to 100 photos, photo package 10 photos, 20 photos, private photo session. So those are, uh, I don't like any of these photo packages. Man, I am a huge advocate of the photo package. I think photo packages are amazing. Uh, I typically like to do the unlimited one because then I get any of the photos. It stinks to have to um, choose which 100 photos you want. Could you imagine sitting there trying to pick 100, 100 uh photos like just give it on me give it to me on a usb i'd be fine um but anyways so those are the different things that are available maybe they want to do a private photo session maybe that's something cool for them oasis is cats broadway show it's a must yes i am very excited very excited about that so photo packages you guys can do that uh now again there's some people that they really like they really enjoy um doing getting paying for as much as they can before they go on the cruise. So maybe they they want to allot their kids a certain amount of money in the arcade, right? Maybe they're like, I really want to go to the arcade. That's where, you know, you want to, your kids are like, I'm going to want to go to the arcade. So maybe what you decide is that you're going to pre-purchase. Hey, you know what? Each kid gets $100 of arcade credit. I can pre-purchase it for $80, because it's 20% off pre-cruising savings. So you're like, all right, you guys know, you guys get $100 each. That's it. When your $100 is up, it's out, right? So you guys can see um, how that works out. So if you guys wanted to do that, they could pre-purchase that. And then gifts and gear. This is something that us travel agents, I mean, they could do it themselves, but let's say you want to do something for your client, right? Maybe you want to throw chocolate covered stra strawberries in their room. Maybe you want to throw some decorations or something. You know, they've booked this. It's a big birthday thing. You know, maybe it's a group cruise. Maybe you guys are doing a group cruise. It's an anniversary. It's an anniversary. You want to celebrate the, the people that are going on the anniversary and you want to surprise them with anniversary decorations. Those are absolutely something that you guys can do. The way you guys would do that is actually by contacting the cruise line and saying, hi, travel agent. I actually want to uh, make a purchase for my client as a surprise. So you guys can look into that. Uh, food and beverage. Again, if decorations is a bit higher than you'd like to spend, right? Then you guys do chocolate covered strawberries, 25 bucks. But what does that gesture do for your business? What does that do, right? What, are, what is your clients get there and they're like, oh man, my travel agent gave me chocolate covered strawberries. They, I was welcomed by cheese tray and white wine. We're always talking about how us as travel agents elevate our clients' experiences so they keep coming back. Um, it's, I, um, I'd stick with my agent. Um, um, you are making a deep connection with your client. My agent is great. It's impressive. Yes, absolutely. Right. So maybe it's a kiddo's birthday. Maybe they're celebrating their kid's fifth birthday and you throw in an inky beach towel and tic-tac-toe game. That's super cute. I don't know why I can even say that like a grown up. It's a tic-tac-toe game, <laughs> right? Maybe that's something. And then you have these parents that are like, oh my gosh. To heck with me, I don't care about me, but they did this for my kiddo. How cute, an inky beach set. Let's face it, they probably flew in. They probably didn't bring beach toys for their kids to play on the beach in Coco Pay. So you surprised them and now they have a beach set. Maybe they have a tic-tac-toe game. Maybe they have a beach top, whatever the case may be. Look how cute, cute these are, inky octopus family travel set. Oh my gosh, um, cooler bags. Those are pretty cool, right? So you guys, those are, again, this is just Royal Caribbean. This is just the things that can be added to the cruise. Booking their cruise is just the beginning, right? You guys are able to really work on those, 
right? You are able, and maybe they, you just get on there and you look at these different things and you talk to them. How you guys present it or how it's booked is completely up to you, right? It's your business to do with how you want to. For me, with that 80-year-old couple, it was easier. She was a visual person. She needed to actually see it. She wanted to discuss it with her husband. They wanted to compare and contrast. So it was easier for them to actually visually see that, right? All right. We do have a few more minutes. Anybody have any questions for me about what we went over yes. today? All right, go for I it. Have a question. Um, mm. Oh, wait. Someone else raise their hand if can go first. Um, I think you're the only one talking now. Oh, okay. Um, but by the way, Mary, oh, uh, you are muted. Although I did see you moving your lips. I'm not sure if you were actually you're, muted, but my no, question you're... is, um, do you know which cruise lines uh allow us to give gifts using our commission to like deduct it from the commission or if any do that i don't i have not heard of anybody doing that mm -hmm. got it thank you mm -hmm. anybody else yes yeah, i have a question krista mm -hmm. um so i have um, a group traveling um Oh, where'd you go? You broke up. Chinmi, where'd you go? Okay, I think she, maybe she'll return in a moment. Um, Carolyn, on Norwegian Cruise Line, you can add cakes, etc., at no cost. Perfect. That's the thing. Like every cruise line is a little bit different. Don't ever be, um, you know, don't be afraid to call up the cruise line and be like, hey, I'm a travel agent. What kind of complimentary things could I get? I know we can do that res with resorts. Even resorts, can you can call them up and say, hey, I'm a travel agent. Um, I did this for a group going to Hawaii. It was her 50th birthday. She had 12 other couples going. And I called up the hotel. Hey, they are, you know, she's celebrating her 50th birthday. Is there anything complimentary that I can add to the room? They're like, yeah, we can add a bottle of, um, I think for them, it was um, champagne and cover shop. Chocolate covered strawberries. Um, Chinwi. Sorry. Yeah, I got no, disconnected. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they I wanted to know when they're cruising, so let's say they um embark on the ship on like from Greece or something, and they're going like the Mediterranean route. Do they need visas for each place the boat stops, each port? You would have to look at each. So if if it's Greece, you, you get a visa for Greece, right? Um, that's where they're getting on the boat from, right? Yeah. You just need to look. So here's the other thing. So you, you have to look to see each country that they're going to, if they need a visa. Mm -hmm. The other thing is also is, and I come across this because one of my friends, um, husband and wife, he is actually from Mexico. He's, um, here in the United States and his wife is from Peru. They're both here in the United States. So they're going on this cruise for me. I actually had to work on visas for them because as a Mexico or, or Peru citizen, they needed visas to go to the Bahamas, the Caribbean. So um, just make sure, um, just look into the different countries for visas. And I think there's actually a link on our travel site in the back and you can actually look to see who needs visas and um, passports for what. Thank you. So I have... <laughs> I have a quick question. Okay. Um, so I have a group going and if I have them booked under one of the rooms in the group, can they, is with that stuff that you were just showing, is there an option to upgrade to like a spa room if they want to, or you can only get spa packages? So are you talking about like Carnival, for instance, they have like spa rooms? Right. Yeah, it is on Carnival. Okay. So you would have to book them into that. Now, if you wanted to, if they wanted to do an upgrade, they could, but you're going to have to do whatever the prevailing rate is for that spa room. Unless it's so, like, uh -huh. when I um, reserved the rooms and I put the balcony rooms and stuff, it didn't give me any options to reserve any of them that were spa rooms. So I'm trying to figure out how I will be able to possibly move if they want to how I would move them up to a spa room because I have those um rooms through the booking like the group booking I reserved them 
and I have to put them into them. But if one of them want one of the spa rooms, I'm trying to figure out how I would upgrade them to that. Just call Carnival and ask them um, what would the cost difference be to bump them to a spa room if they are, there's some available. Okay. Thank Just you. call the cruise line. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, Jimmy, go ahead. You were, I think you were still, did I finish answering your question? Um, solo travelers don't, uh, with Royal Caribbean specifically, they mm -hmm. get perks that couples and groups don't get. Am I correct about that? So there are cruise lines that do solo travelers and I have not seen, again, like I said, I don't pretend to know hundred percent of hundred percent of things. Um, I have not seen solo traveler for Royal, Royal Caribbean. Um, and I, and I actually asked this question because, um, that cruise that I actually have booked for my best friend and my son, my son may not be able to go because of work. Um, and I asked them and they was still double occupancy. So you would have okay. to, you would have to actually call the cruise line and ask. Now I know there are some cruise lines that are, you know, um, princess or whatnot, that they have those solo packages. Um, I think that some of Royal Caribbean's ships do have solo occupant occupancy rooms, but it's not going to be every cruise line. It's going to be specific. Some of the newer ships, they're starting to build rooms or rooms, cabins for solo travelers. So it's going to be a cruise ship by cruise ship, you know, thing, you know, carnival, royal print. You just have to to call them and ask, but they're not necessarily going to be um, maybe out in the open on the, the thing. You would just have to, but I know like my crews personally, they don't have solo rates. Okay. And my other question was on the specialty restaurants, do those prices include the drinks? For instance, the 139 for three nights package. Like you're saying like if they didn't, if they don't have the drink package? Right. No, they don't include the alcohol. Okay, I didn't think so. All right, nope. thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, let me I get through. Question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, so on Norwegian, they always advertise this free sea package thing. And so when I called them, they're telling me that it's technically not free at sea. <laughs> the only thing that's really free is like the flight. The drink package that they advertise is free at sea. It's like you get two beverages and that's it for that day, for the whole cruise. So if you're on an 11 day cruise, that's it. That's all you get. The Wi-Fi is like 150 minutes of Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. The entire cruise. <laughs> and I think that's the <laughs> thing is like, though, like whenever I see like Norwegian, like, oh, three for whatever, or, you mm -hmm. know, it's a couple of different things. <laughs> Interior room will get this. If you do an ocean view, you get this and this. If you get balcony, you get this, this, and this, right? It's very similar to like, if you ever see up to $500 on board credit. I had to learn this. And I, cause I booked an, a balcony and I said, well, why don't I get $500 on board credit? And they said, oh, because the pinnacle of suites gets 500 and then they break it down tier by tier. So by the time it gets to balcony, it was like a hundred dollars, which I mean, I'm not mad about a hundred dollars, but when you're thinking 500. So I have found with Norwegian that sometimes those five free offer it's like yeah you get five if you do the suite but if you do an interior room you're only getting one but then there's also the fine print okay airfare right i found okay well yeah it's airfare but it's only on the first and second guest third and fourth you have to pay for or maybe it's the third and fourth guest airfare that's paid for you know drink package oh drinks included okay but it doesn't say until you look at the fine print that it's two complimentary drinks or 150 minute, you know? So that's why I'm always like, I'm very leery about those perks. They're, what are those? They're catchy, right? They're to draw people in, right? It's, it's kind of like going to a car dealership and the, the car's $29,999. Why don't they put that 30,000? Because people see the three and they suddenly think it's more than 29,999, you know? So it's a, it's a, um, a sales gimmick or a sales thing. Just make sure to look at those Hey, can I clarify something about the Norwegian drink package? You can clarify as much as you want. 
I mean, I've sailed with them four times mm -hmm. and their, their drink package is legitimate. It's unlimited. Uh, you can get four drinks when you go up to the bar. Um, you just can't go over a drink that's over $15. If it's, uh, if any drink is over $15, that's what you pay for. But if is that is the no drink package? The number of drinks that you get. Is that the drink package that she's talking about? The one that comes yeah. free, like the free, 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 whatever? Yeah, the one that's in the bundle right now with the airfare and the shore credit. Okay. Another thing I learned with Norwegian, they have two different package types. So like package A includes like um, the drink, uh, beverage, dining, internet, shore excursion. And then package B has four things, internet, shore excursion, $100 onboard credit, and 10 photos. But package B, you can only choose two out of those four, is what he mm -hmm. told me yesterday. I was like, oh. And then even package A, the the internet, quote unquote internet, is only 150 minutes of Wi-Fi. You have to pay for more if you want that. Yeah. It's and that's the thing. That's why I always very gimmicky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I glad I called. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Let me get through some of these other questions real fast. Can real fast, can you book it? for ourselves and also get it. Can we book it for ourselves and all? Can, oh, so Penny, can you book your own cruise and get commission? Yep, I'm earning commission on that cruise. Uh, so gifts aren't deducted from commission. Nope. Um, do they leave a note if we buy them? So, yeah, you can add a note. Um, um, it's commission only. Commission only. Um, okay, I just wanted to make sure in case I decided to make a gift happen. Solo travel, get discounts, the others don't. Do you know? Okay. Um, need to run. You're welcome, Lisa. All right, you guys. I think that's the end of it. Thank you guys so much for attending. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. See what we cover next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>